the project evolved. It wasn't a decision. It wasn't the CBS management coming to me and saying, your job is to design a completely new Rhodes piano. It was, your job is to go work with Harold and come up with some stuff. And the idea to develop a completely new piano was pretty much mine. And it was based on trying to solve several problems that, you know, we, we looked at what are the strengths and weaknesses of the piano? Well, obviously the strength is it has a classic sound that's unmatched by any other instrument and it just plain sounds great. The weaknesses are, well, it's heavy. It's really heavy. It's hard to manufacture consistently every time. It's hard to keep adjusted and tuned so that you get that perfect magical sound. You know, when you know what you're doing, you can get the perfect magical sound, but you just pick the average roads in a nightclub that hasn't been maintained very well, and sometimes they can sound very, very awful. Um, the other thing is a little bit more technical of uh, a question. The Rhodes action is a very, very, very simplified action. The grand piano action has many, many moving parts, and it's evolved over hundreds of years to do what's really actually a fairly amazing thing, to play a very, very quiet note and a very, very loud note. And in order to do that, the action has to be able to control the rebound of the hammer as it hits the either string or the tine in the case of the Rhodes, control the rebound and not hit more than once. The Rhodes action being a very, very, very simplified action, there's a lot of compromises in it. And one of the downsides of the traditional Rhodes action, you could adjust it to play a really, really gnarly loud note, but when you did that, you couldn't get a soft note. You could adjust it to play really, really delicate, really, really nice, pretty soft notes, but if you stomp it, well, then you'd get multiple hits. The hammer would hit the tine multiple times and bounce, and it would produce a really, really awful sound, which we called a spud note. So those were the two kind of major goals that we were attempting to accomplish, or actually the three major goals we were trying to accomplish, to reduce the weight, to make them more consistent, and to improve the dynamics. We, who were kind of critical and kind of you know, fairly serious about this and wanted to make sure that we put out something that was really good, the more that we played with it and the more that we looked at it, we realized it was a harder problem than anybody thought, kind of like everything else with the piano. And it was going to take a fairly uh, you know, indeterminately long, but not a few weeks of extra work to finally perfect it. And because we were operating in a kind of a tight time window, uh, CBS was uh, kind of nearing the end of their involvement in the musical instrument business. And they pretty much said, one more try, and then we'll see if we can make this work. And little bit by little bit, the weeks were ticking off and we had to have something. And when the news was given that, well, we don't know how long it's going to take to perfect it, then we switched to Plan B. The Mark V was basically Harold and Steve uh, trying their best to perfect the piano. Um, the parts that I worked on, well, I designed the case, the stand, a lot of the little internal packaging details. I did the graphics. I actually was uh, one of many who observed that the Rhodes was labeled input. <laughs> and the reasoning, I guess, was, well, that's where you plug the cord in, isn't it? So it was correctly labeled. It was a kind of a cleaner, more modern graphic. Most of the time we got along exceptionally well. But I think what I remember most about him is his energy and his refusal to grow old. I remember he had this kind of enormous compound on the hill, uh, in oh, kind of uh, up in the hills of Fullerton. And one day we went up there, I don't know what for, to pick up something, and he locked himself out of his house. And so, no problem, I'll just climb the fence. And I'm thinking, you know, here's a 73-year-old guy with heart problems, climbing an eight-foot fence and thinking nothing of it. And that's Harold. He, every day, came into the lab excited, ready to go, 
And what problem can we solve today? How can we make this thing better?